Almost everyone has had to adjust to a new normal in this ongoing pandemic, and it can take a real toll. Take a look. Hi, this is Paula Garrison with Made Solutions. Since the pandemic started in March, we had so many cancellations on our residential accounts. Most of the ladies that work here are single moms, so that was really stressing me out. We were super busy trying to follow all the CDC guidelines that were changing weekly. We were changing our gear, our equipment, our supplies. So that was also a lot of work trying to train all the ladies with all the new things that were changing throughout our company. Also, the biggest concern was safety. I mean, just making sure that my employees, my clients, and myself were safe. If we've been working so hard through this pandemic, and I just realized that I didn't even have time to cope. So how can we make sure we stay balanced and sane through this pandemic? Joining us to talk about this is psychiatrist, Dr. Dominic Sportelli. So Dr. Sportelli, how do essential workers like Paula actually stay resilient during this ongoing and very difficult crisis? Oh my goodness, she gave such great examples of what she's going through. And I think it's important to understand why this is happening, right? We have increased work hours, we have increased demand, just as she explained. We also have fear of health risks, obviously, right? Not just for ourselves, but for our families. And the important thing in that segment was that it's not just doctors and nurses is on the front line. We have janitorial services, cleaning services, warehouse services. There are so many other people on the front line all risking their health. And when we look at this, this is what's incredible, is an NIH study looked at the psychological impacts of frontline workers, just as we talked about, and the symptoms that they were experiencing psychologically were consistent with post-traumatic stress disorder. So think about that. Those, those symptoms are like sleep issues, nightmares, detachment from your family, avoidance, isolation, feeling burnt out. I mean, this is a very, very significant psychological impact. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I didn't think about it in the terms of, you know, almost like experiencing PTSD. I mean, that, that's, that's really serious. Some people actually are feeling overwhelmed. The minute they wake up and get out of bed, they feel like the world is on their shoulders. How can people regain a sense, the sense of control? The most important thing that I want people out there to know is that we have to have awareness of our own mental well-being. Pay attention to yourself, to your moods, to your anxieties. Just being on the front line and just being out there, we have this sense of putting ourselves second. And that's okay, but we still need to take care of ourselves, right? Because it's so easy to feel a sense of loss of control. And in this world right now, there's so much lack of control. I mean, people are feeling... Imagine if I get this virus, am I gonna be asymptomatic? Am I gonna have the sniffles? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna end up on a ventilator? So we are so fearful of that loss of control. So be aware of your own mental well-being and control what you can, and I have some tips. Okay. Plan your day, control what you can. And most importantly, a few things, your sleep-wake cycles are incredibly important. People don't really pay attention to that. But now that we've lost structure in our day-to-day -day routine, it's incredibly important to keep your sleep-wake cycles. And that's what doctors call circadian rhythms, right? So try and get up and go to sleep at the same time every day. Schedule breaks for, your t for yourself. You need to put breaks in that day for yourself. And when you do have breaks, try and schedule something that is, that is joyful and pleasant for you. Make sure you're scheduling time for you. The other thing is turn off the news from time to time. It's okay to take a break from social media and the news because we're inundated with so much information that makes us feel even more out of control, right? And something that I do that is incredibly helpful and even in the book shows to be really, really helpful is get out in nature. It grounds you. It's a sense of presence. It's a sense of mindfulness. I surf, I ride my motorcycle, I do all these things because I'm out there in the hospitals and I feel overwhelmed, I feel burnt out, and I do these things myself. So I'm really trying to practice what I preach and it's really, really beneficial. 